Terry, artificial intelligence today is one of the hottest topics in not just science, but the, the social understanding of, 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 of science in terms of machine learning and chat boxes. And, Right. Um, competition between the U.S. and China. I mean, there's a lot of areas in which AI is very important today, uh, as well as the real world. Um, in addition, more and more scientists are talking about transhumanism in the merging of, uh, of non-biological materials with humans in order to, for human enhancement. And this is not just theory with cochlear implants and implants and people who are blind can can begin to see f right, forms right. way. So I mean, this is this is real stuff. How far it goes, we don't know. What 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 I'd love you to do, and be, people talk about this, is reflect on these two areas uh, from the standpoint of your underlying theory of uh, of language uh, and uh, the importance of semiotics and signs and how signs can be embedded within um, in, in molecules and uh, at, at various levels, including at the level of language. Uh, so when you understand language and then ultimately consciousness from your perspective, what does it imply about artificial intelligence and transhumanism? Well, these are two big questions, of course, um, in which we'll be lost in the world of speculation for a while to sure. talk about them. But, um, let me start with the transhumanism and then so we move on from there because I think that we're, in one respect, as a species, we're already somewhat transhuman. Or what I should say is we're transbiological. Okay. Yeah. Uh, and that's because we we spend all of our time in each other's heads, each mm -hmm. other's thoughts, each other's worries, each other's purposes, each other's um, problems and so on. Um, language, the symbolic capacities of language has allowed us to get in each, into each other's heads and to live there most of our lives. Um, and uh, because of this, um, we're a species that is larger than individuals. Um, our thought processes are not just in our heads. Some people have talked about this as, as extended an extended mind, mind yeah. notion. Um, I think that that's largely true. Um, it's not that consciousness is necessarily extended, but intelligence is. And I want to be clear that I think we should be careful to not think that just intelligence and consciousness are the same thing. Um, I think they're not. And I think it's one of the challenges with the phrase artificial intelligence, uh, because we tend to confuse it with artificial consciousness, mm -hmm. or that it might become conscious right, right. or something like that. I think that's a, a mistake in the same sense that the fact that although we're sharing words, um, there's intelligence here. There's com complexity, symbolic complexity, but those words themselves are not part of the consciousness. Sure. Um, what's going on in each of our heads um, is part of that consciousness. It's about those words and so on. So in that respect, um, I think that in one way we're already transhuman um, or transbiological uh, in that sense. But the ability to then link us up in these elaborate ways with these new electronic means that we have um, has enhanced what was already there. Although we've been necessarily linked together individually um, into this larger unit we oftentimes describe as a, as a culture or a society, mm -hmm. this has sped that process up and deepened that process and allowed more details to be there um, as a result um, of being able to sort of link up more parts of our nervous systems. It's gonna be even more radical in this respect. That doesn't mean that that's itself conscious, but now our various consciousnesses are gonna be much more entangled with each other in this respect. Yeah. I mean, that's, that sounds very rational, and what you're, what you're saying is that this is not a difference in kind, it's a, because it's already occurring, if, but it's, we're so used to it, we, we do it in our own way. Uh, we're in each other's minds, we're part of the culture, and we're sharing this extended mind as part of our normal activity. Now, if it's, it's physicalized with some piece of equipment that literally can communicate between us. We think that's radically new, but it's really an enhancement of doing what we're already doing right. in the same sense. So I think that's, that's a very good point. Then, so conceptually or philosophically, it's the same, an enhancement. Is it the case that if you increase that enough, you have a step function, you have a difference in relationship, but that, that's still not a philosophical and principle point because you're saying right. that that's already there. That's sort of, you know, how society might be, might be changed in a, 
in an opera in, in an instrumental way as opposed to a, a in principle way. Well, so uh, an example of the of this of how the two are linked comes from this um, Jesuit philosopher um, Pierre, Pierre Teilhard de Chardin, and in his view of human beings, he thinks of us as part of a noosphere. In fact, his view of the noosphere is sort of a future development. I actually think that we've been part of a noosphere um, for most of our human existence. Uh, and the, the term noosphere comes from the Greek for noos, to be an idea or to be a thought. Sphere, uh, again, the biosphere is about life and the surface, all over the surface of the earth. The noosphere is about how thought has encompassed the earth. Mm -hmm. uh, to some extent, we human beings have encompassed the earth to some extent with our thinking and communication. Um, and that means that, in a sense, um, there is a kind of a, an extended mind that extends over the entire globe. Um, the interesting thing is that we're in the process now of elaborating that, elaborating it by virtue of the fact that we're increasing our ability to communicate distantly, rapidly, and in ways that we never would have thought possible um, with all these new electronic capacities. Mm. And in so doing, it's probably changing our way of thinking, our way of being, our, even our self-identity. Uh, in the same way that language has, of course, in its use and the knowledge we get from our cultures affects our identity and the way we think. Mm. Um, this is a medium that's gonna radically change the way we are what we are. Um, and that means that the noosphere is evolving. The noosphere is becoming different. Will it transition into something very, very different? I think it's an open question. Will it become, as Teilhard thought, will it become conscious of itself? Um, is there some sort of build up that if you get enough of it, it crosses over into the realm of consciousness? I actually don't think so, but it will change the consciousness that we have. And I think that's an important part of the story. That makes this a transhuman transition. Um, and I think uh, looking at how things are changing so rapidly during this last decade or so, um, it's, I think, a hint that that process is happening right now, that this is a major transition point, a major inflection point in uh, human evolution.